nation. History bears testament to those who have led a nation. From the early kings that united warring tribes to create some semblance of a nation, to those that have caught the spirit and essence of their people and turned it into the ingredients to forge empires. We have seen those who have risen to lead. Kings, queens, emperors, revolutionaries, generals, presidents and prime ministers. Each has sought to harness the power of a nation and with it govern it. Some seek stability, others glory and conquest, and others wish to make the nation great again. From Julius Caesar to Margaret Thatcher, from Cleopatra to JFK, from Queen Elizabeth to Winston Churchill, and from Wu Zetian to Barack Obama, we have witnessed leaders rise and The great and the greedy, the peaceful and the pugilists, the builders and the bringers of destruction. The world has witnessed many leaders, but what if your favorite YouTubers found themselves installed as a leader of a nation, be it an existing one or a virgin nation state? How would they lead? What would change? What would remain? What would their key policies be? What would be the national anthem? Who would form their cabinet? How would they rule? Well, you are about to find out in H.G. Tudor's exciting new series, if I ruled my world, where YouTubers hold the reins of power and you decide if you want them as your leader. Hello, I'm HG Tudor and welcome to If I Ruled My World, where we hand the reins of power to particular YouTubers and make them the leader of a country and find out what's in store for the world and the citizens of that country with them calling the shots. And I'm pleased to welcome Fiona, also known as Avid Gardner. Hello, Fiona. Hello, HG. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you for asking, and looking forward to learning more about the nation that you have forged. Right. So, if we'll get straight down to business and learn more about how you, as the new leader of this nation, what's this country going to be called? Oh, it'd be a planet. I couldn't just have a country. It's got to be a whole planet full of aliens. It's going to be a planet that you're going to have, not a, not a nation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're certainly the architect of thinking big here with an entire planet. What's the capital of what? What name would this planet have? Oh, I don't know. Something like Zog. Zog. Hmm. Okay. It's uh, short and snappy, I guess. Not too much room for confusion on. Uh, Easy to spell. Zog. Easy to spell. Absolutely. Even the Epsilon Semimorans might get that one right. Now, given that Zog's a planet, it's going to have to have its seat of power. And given that you rule the entire planet, presumably we're going to dispense with the notion of there being other countries on this planet. The whole thing's yours. Yeah, total global domination. Right, OK. And uh, so what's the capital of this dominated globe going to be? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. Um, Zogette. That's Zogette. another e easy one to spell. Z O. Z-O-G-E-T. Zogget, I think. Zogget. Okay, so Zogget is the capital on the planet Zog. 
And what would your seat of power be? Uh, absolute Empress. OK, so you're going to be known as Empress Fiona. Yeah, no democracy, because that, okay. that just doesn't work for me. Uh, it's too much arguing, too many different ideas. It's much better if everybody just does exactly as I tell them. Well, I could certainly endorse that approach to life. Absolutely. OK, so seeing as we've dispensed with the concept of a nation, I'm going to have to sort of alter the questions when we're talking about ordinarily the being national anthem. So what's the planetary anthem for Zog? Oh, it'd be all about worshipping me. It would have my name in it repeatedly, like God save. Uh, I'd be the, the Zogina, wouldn't I? Uh, Zogina. Yeah, so, God all, save all... the Zogina. Well, actually, I'd be, yeah, probably above above all of that. So be all hail Empress Zogina, for she for it is she that has enriched our lives. Exactly. W would that would that be set to the tune of "You're So Vain"? Some, something like that. Yeah, a nice, yeah, simple, okay. easy, easy tune because it'd be an easy planet. I don't want any difficult long words that are difficult to spell. Yeah. <laughs> or complicated situations, and probably mass slavery. I think. Is okay. Well, we'll get we'll get on to the. We'll get on to how the populace is treated in due course. That might be one of your uh, key yeah. policies, having uh, mass slavery. So we, we've essentially got a bespoke anthem, which is going to be along the lines of it's all hail Empress Zogina. OK, and what's the planetary dish? Oh, uh, cheese and onion sandwiches, mostly, would be like the, the planetary dish. OK, any particular type of cheese? A cheddar. OK, and We're imported from Earth, of course. OK, so they're coming from Earth and with the onion and. Oh, yeah, of course. What type of bread? Oh, uh, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. Um, I suppose that would have to come from Earth as well, um, unless it depends what the mineral values would be on this planet and the climate and agriculture and stuff like that. Well, you uh, might yeah, have, found... have to would have to have good agriculture. So, yeah, they make their own bread. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you might have found a planet that's in the Goldilocks zone, so it's fairly similar to Earth, and you've just taken it over. Or it might be a barren red rock orbiting around a distant star that you've colonised part of and started to terraform. I mean, seeing as you've gone for the planetary option, that would yeah. open up a whole host of different questions. But um, So cheese and onion sandwiches, bread to be made on Zog. So it would be uh, Zog loaf, presumably. Yeah, which could mm. be blue, for example. It could, couldn't it? It could be a blue, a blue loaf. That would be rather extraordinary, but uh, certainly stand out. And what's the planetary animal that represents Zog? Oh, uh, ostriches, like a type of ostrich sort of character that would just roam free. OK, so so the ostrich. It'd be all kinds of animals. Yeah, but uh, you have to select one that would be representative of Zog. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think the ostrich. It's a noble beast, isn't it? Okay, so you go for the ostrich. Are we to read anything into that with regard to burying one's head in the sand? <laughs> I don't know. I think they're quite aggressive, actually. I had a boyfriend who was attacked by one once. Wasn't emu, I... was it? Wasn't emu, was it? It was like, yeah, it was yeah. one of them. Went to a safari park, and it was it was about a mile and a half away, uh -huh. and it saw him, and it was like, I don't like you. And I saw it coming. I said, hey, it's coming for you. And it came up to my window. But looking at him, then it went round his side of the car. And it was really aggressively hitting the window. And he, he was an idiot. He was a total idiot. You know, yeah. was, he a Manchester, was he a Manchester United supporter? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think he was I, into football. OK, well, I could understand that reaction to a Manchester United supporter. So so we're going to go, going to go for the ostrich. <laughs> OK. What's the planetary flag? of Zog. What does that look like? Oh, just really nice, simple, just black. Just a okay. black square. Again, keep it really simple for the citizens, because I'm that kind of benevolent despot. OK, so a black square. Mm. Simple enough. What about the planetary motto? Oh, um, I don't know, I might, I might have to come back to that one. Um, Simplicity. There we are. Simplicity. There you go. You and I could rule a planet. We're working it all out, one step at a time. 
Well, but you're thinking right now, there's always one, isn't there? Well, no, I'm just thinking me rule with somebody else. It doesn't compute. <laughs> you, <laughs> you might, you, you'll be ordered around by me. <laughs> you can have the planet next door and we'll have a war. Uh, well, with actually... Slaves fighting each other on our well, behalf. So that, that would certainly... So you fill up a Sunday, so that would be at least uh, entertaining if things are a bit dull on the Sunday if there's no decent football to watch. Hmm. Now, we've got Zog with its cheese and onion sandwiches with ostriches and a black square for the flag. Motto simplicity. What's the planetary day called to celebrate Zog? And what date would that be? Oh, there's no date. And every day is the same. Every day is like yeah, Sunday. Yeah, we don't, we don't with all that saying. seven days a week and, and all that stuff. It's too complicated. Keep it really simple. So in effect, there is no planetary day. No, it's just zit. Every day is <laughs> every day is just cool okay. Zit. Okay. Well, with those things established, we're now going to address some of the policies. Now, you are only allowed to pick one of these, and you have to pick one of them. You can't caveat them. So I'm going to read the choices to you, and then you tell me which is the one that's nearest to what you would have. So we're going to start with foreign policy, which I suppose would be better described as interplanetary policy. Mm. OK, so would your policy be defence only or aid allied planets and defend Zog, would you have a um, galaxy-based policing role? Would you be expansionist with regard to claiming historic territories? So, for instance, you see Mercury and say, well, we once had a claim to Mercury, we're going to get it back. Or would you be expansionist with regard to historical planetary claims, but also resources? Hang on a second. Mars looks like it's got some useful diamond mines on it. I think we'll invade. Or finally, is your policy in terms of uh, planetary, interplanetary policy, uh, policy rather, one of, you've looked at me funny, I'm coming to get you? Oh, uh, expansionists, definitely, and exploitation of other planets and um, their citizens and their minerals. Okay, so pretty a uh, bit of a war footing there for Zog. Yeah. Is it going to go after people and claim other planets and claim their resources? Okay, so interplanetary mayhem beckons, just yeah. how we like it. Now, turning to the question of nuclear missiles or a planetary equivalent, would it be the case that you wouldn't have any? Or would you utilise them deterrent only? Namely, I won't use them, but I won't let the other planets know that's the case. Or would you only utilise those weapons in retaliation, i.e. you've been fired on first with similar weapons? Or is it simply a case of, hell yeah, let's get nuking? <laughs> I'd have something better than a nuclear weapon. I'd have something like um, a big laser gun that could cut off and maybe just play target practice with some of the smaller planets. Yeah, so basically you'd have the interplanetary version of the Death Star. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always like that Darth Vader fellow. So, Obi so o o all of a sudden, Obi-Wan Kenobi would feel a disturbance in the force as Zog has just zapped and smithereened yeah. another planet. Understood. <laughs> yeah, okay. a very unimportant planet. You know, maybe we're very boring and unimportant citizens. OK. Let's look at the question of press and media freedom now. Would it be case that be no interference from you at all in it? Would it only be interference on the basis of planetary security? Or would you interfere on the basis of whatever you deem to be sensitive? Or is the media basically planetary owned, i.e. owned by you, so you decide what's written and stated and broadcast? Oh, yeah, there'd be none of that free press stuff. You wouldn't need that anyway, because there'd be no democracy. OK, so basically it's a diet of propaganda yeah. that comes from Empress Zagina. Yeah telling everybody that your chocolate ration has been increased this month as a consequence of the war over the Martians having been successful, yeah. etc. In fact, I think there'd probably only be one one media allowed and it'd be called something like the Daily Zip. OK. Yeah, there we are. So that's your media that uh, you control. 
Let's turn now to the question of religious tolerance. Is there complete freedom of worship and expression? Or can there be freedom of worship unless it's provocative to other religions? Is it the case that it's only the existing planetary religion, the, the dominant one there, but the other ones are secretly tolerated? Or is it the existing planetary religion and there's non tolerance of anything else? And in fact, you persecute the unapproved religions or and I think I know where we're going to end up here. You worship me and only me. Remember. There we are. OK, you worship me and only me. So the total intolerance. OK, so the, the official religion is uh, me. It's, me. it's to you. OK. What about the question of equality? So is it the case that minorities are actively supported? They're protected and they gain positive discrimination? Or are minorities protected by anti-discrimination legislation? Or it's a case of we promote ability. We're not here to fill quotas. Or are minority issues completely ignored? Or minorities are actually persecuted because they're a nuisance? Oh, I don't, I don't think there'd be any minorities. They'll all be exactly the same, all the citizens. They'll all be the same. What if, though, someone's managed to sneak in, you know, they, they, they've got an escape pod from one of their spaceships and they've landed and they, they've started to create a little settlement towards the north pole of your planet. So there is a minority that's come from elsewhere. How would you deal with them? Oh, they'd probably be like executed live on TV for entertainment for all the other citizens because they'd all look at them and go, you don't look like us. You're weird. You've got OK. Go. You know, yeah. So that's Saturday night peak viewing. The best, it? really. So basically, the minorities will be persecuted because they're a nuisance. Yeah, yeah. Seems about right. It certainly seems yeah. in keeping with the overall ethos of Zog. Nobody's welcome, basically. Yeah, yeah. except the okay. slaves. All right. Mm. Now, I want you to turn your attention to the question of who's ruling this planet. Naturally, it's you, but... You're one person. You can't fulfill all roles. There needs to be some delegation. And therefore, there's a short form cabinet, uh, in this instance, on a planetary basis. Who would you appoint as your defence chief? Um, well, all the citizens would look the same. So I suppose they'd all have the same name. That could get a bit confusing, actually, couldn't it? Thinking about it now. I might have to give them different names. Um, I don't know. There'd be nobody famous on my planet. Only me. OK, any possibility of bringing somebody in from planet Earth as the. Oh, the no, 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 only to deliver the cheese and the onions. But if they stayed, they'd have to be executed on the, the tele, on the telly. I see. OK, so the defence chief would basically be a Zogite. Well, yeah, it'd be me, really. I'd, I'd have like really sophisticated weapons that, that I could either mind control, perhaps, or uh, I'd have a very small remote control where I could just blow things up. So I wouldn't okay. need so, you, so basically you're appointing yourself. Yeah. Mm. As defence chief with your mind controlled ray guns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Who's going to be appointed as your secretary of interplanetary relations? Um, oh, that would be my chief slave. You know, I'll have a, a, um, a favourite. OK. And what would be the ethos of this favourite? What would they basically, what's the mandate that they've been given? Just do as they're told, you know, just whenever. Just I don't do even know what their told. name is because, you know, mm -hmm. I've never inquired. Just a favourite slave. OK, just do as you're told. Yeah. Who's going to be the chief scientific officer? Oh, me, of course, because you I'll again. be the most intelligent person on the planet. OK. Who's going to be holding the purse strings? Who's the Chancellor of the Exchequer? Uh, me. You again? Mm -hmm. OK. And I'm not sure whether this, given what I've heard so far, I'm not sure if this is actually going to be a valid position, but we'll find out. Who's Minister for Fun? Well, there isn't any. There isn't one, no. I've Only for me. <laughs> well, the rest of them, they need to just be getting on doing their slave stuff. I see. OK, so basically Zog's one huge penal colony, slave Ooh. colony, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically just sort of through, it's just full of sort of workers and drones, etc. And I'm the queen. 
and you're the queen. So it's a bit, bit, bit like Milton Keynes then. <laughs> All right. Okay. Less roundabouts, though. Less roundabouts. Yeah, there was a bit of drawback. Would you have any concrete cows, though? That's the... Uh... Um, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, I might okay. do. Now, what we have to consider is ordinarily who your major ally would be. Now, ordinarily, this is on a country basis, but you've gone big, and so it's interplanetary. So are you going to have a planet that's a major ally? Well, uh, yeah, I guess your planet, because I think uh, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I, I think that would be... Um, and I might invite you to the planet if you trust me not to have you executed or anything oh, like I that. Oh, I see. So, so basically, Planet Tudor would be sought out as an ally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which planet's going to be your major enemy? Uh, probably you as well, actually. I'd imagine. Um, and Meg, Megan, she might have a planet. What would her planet be called? Um, I don't know, Megalia, something like that. Megalia, the planet mm. Megalia. Yeah, where, where Megalions. All the yeah, where all the vegetation is beige coloured. <laughs> okay, so, well, we'll go with that because you can't pick me as the enemy as well as your ally. You're going to have to go down one side or the other. Uh, admittedly. Yeah, then you and I could bully the Megalia planet. Oh, I, 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 I don't bully. I just point out people's shortcomings. That's not bullying, you know, just pointing out when somebody's got something wrong. People overreact. <laughs> now, I, this could take us quite some time to get through this next one. Would any particular group not be welcome in your on your planet? Uh, well, uh, yeah, Megaliers. Megaliers. So nobody from the planet Megaliah. So the, or any they, other planet, come to think of it, because they should be on their own planet, minding their own business. So basically, mm. anybody who's not a Zogite isn't welcome. Yeah. Okay, Apart well, from uh, Earthlings, like I say, to deliver the national Okay, dish. so Earthlings get a temporary visa for the purposes mm. of delivery of cheese and yeah. onions. Mm -hmm. Anybody from the planet Megalia, not allowed. Dead. And anybody Dead. who's a non-Zogite, yeah, non they're not allowed in either. In fact, with mega liars, we'd probably put them in a room full of multicolours, bright colours, so that they'd just die, wouldn't they? Because they come from a beige planet. Yeah, it would be. They'd go insane in this room, and we could all it, laugh at them while they're doing that. It would be a sensory overload for them, undoubtedly, mm. for various reds and greens and fuchsia, etc. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably make their eyes bleed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty grisly, grisly way for them to go out, I should imagine. But there we are, a te technicolour torture. Right, yeah. OK. You might want to patent that. OK, now we turn to your foundation policies, the things that really matter to you and the things that stand out. And you've got five foundation policies. So what's your first major policy? Um, no long words. A lot easy, very easy to spell words. What's like the thought that. process behind that? It just makes life easier. You know, it, reading is overrated, and for slaves, that they, they don't need to use that skill set very often. So, and they wouldn't be at school for very long because they learn these very small words, mm. and in order to function. I once listened to a radio play, but it's very interesting, and it was it basically revolved around how language was a privilege so you had your hierarchies a little bit like brave new world and the people at the bottom they were conditioned so that they would basically only be able to say whether something was good or yeah. bad or it how does it taste nice they wouldn't yeah. be able to describe it and any if they came across longer words they were incapable of using them it would actually make them feel physically ill because they've been conditioned to not use them and then the further up you went in the hierarchy the more words that you had so of course the people at the top they had very diverse vocabularies but when they spoke in such terms those at the bottom wouldn't be necessarily able to understand them and it was quite interesting because a love affair took place between someone who didn't have many words and one of the sort of controlling individuals and the way that he got his revenge on her was to condition her so that she lost her vocabulary, which, 
yeah, it was, it was quite it was quite interesting. So in essence, they had a similar system. So no long words. Would there be a maximum limit on the number of uh, uh, syllables that were allowed? Uh, oh yeah, uh, one syllable words. One syllable really, words. Really short words. So you couldn't even use really. <laughs> No, they'd have to go re or leave. So they? I suppose you'd maybe start creating a different <laughs> language as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. But nobody would say hello. You It'd be a very to... easy language to, to learn, wouldn't it? I mean, I've been struggling with Spanish for years. Oh, they've got gazillions of syllables and loads of their, their words. Great big, great big long words, totally unnecessary. So you could go, so basically you wouldn't say hello because that's got two syllables. It would be hi. You could say, I love you, that would fit. I hate you, that would fit. Yeah. You couldn't ask for pizza. <laughs> that's that's off the menu. And you wouldn't be able to have onion. Uh, oh, right, yeah, yeah, we'd have to call it nyun. Yeah, cheese, mm. che cheese and un. Cheese Red. and nyun. You couldn't mm. have sandwich either. You'd have to just call it sand, sand. or witch or a witch. Yeah. Well, I think sir, you might actually have to hire a, a minister for language to facilitate all of this. Oh, uh, no. Anyone caught using long words would just be whipped. You know, yeah, but I mean to establish... Don't do it again. I was thinking more in terms of establishing the language in the first place so that people... Oh, are I see. Yeah. Well, that would be down to the schools. Yeah. So you'd, you would have those that would just teach this monosyllabic yeah. language. Mm. which I, I suppose really you're looking for somebody who just make, really just speaks in grunts and utterances. Mm. Yeah. Like a cave person. Mm. Yeah, in essence. Yeah. OK. So I suppose you might want to ship a few people in from Barrow in Furness, but uh, no, no, no. Everybody's lovely in Barrow in Furness. <laughs> OK, so first like... foundation policy is no long words. Right. OK. Yeah. What's your second one? Uh, nobody gets ill. Because, you know, it's us it just takes, they'd be taking time off work all the time, wouldn't they? So when you say nobody gets ill, you mean nobody's allowed to be ill? Exactly. Hide it. Keep it yourself. No one's interested. No nobody's phone in sick for slave duty. Would you have some form of um, euthanising of people that are ill or would you just let leave them be until they got better? Um, just leave them alone. Don't want to talk about it. Um, there'd be deserts and stuff. They could go there. So you'd be sent into the desert. So if you've got a bit of a cold, you're banished into the desert until yeah. it either goes away or you're dead. Yeah, best you keep it to yourself, yeah. Certainly the health service wouldn't be a drain on planet would it? No. no, there wouldn't be one, except for me. Yeah. So you, you'd have the best health care. Of course. And everybody else pops into the desert and hopes there's a cure for cancer in there somewhere. Exactly. exactly. OK, third policy. Oh, uh... Oh, I don't know. Do we need any more? I think well, there's some pretty good foundations there. Well, let me ask you this. What, how is Zog going to be funded? Uh, well, I don't suppose it would need to be, as long as they can generate their own food, apart from the cheese and yin, um, then, they, you know, they can feed themselves and me. Yeah, but what's going to pay for all of these ray guns and weapons that you've got? Um, well, we would just steal... Like you start off, you steal a little weapon and, and you go around threatening people with bigger weapons. Pick your moment. And um, then you steal the bigger weapons and so on and so forth. It's just literally um, being a criminal, going out and uh, raiding other planets. Yeah, but you, would, you wouldn't be able to do that on your own. So you, you'd have to encourage Zog, the Zogites. Yeah, yeah the it. slaves would help. Mm. OK, so basically they'd be unpaid because they're yeah, slaves. Yeah, they'd back me up. And there's a lot of them. Isn't there a chance of a slavish revolt here? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, because they're probably going to be quite stupid. These little words. Um, yeah, and but stupid people can up. be violent. Uh, yeah, well, I suppose so. I suppose so. Um, but they wouldn't be able to get to me very easily because I live in a big pyramid. OK, but who, who's keeping the pyramid clean? Slaves. Uh, yeah, yeah, more slaves. I get to choose weak ones. You, know, you choose weak slaves. Yeah, ones that, don't want to be Spartacus, you know. Okay, ones that have collapsed being in the desert. Actually, exercise would be forbidden, and um, weightlifting particularly. Anything that would encourage um, strength, yeah. 
Okay. I've only just thought of that, thanks to you. Mm. Okay, so exercise would be forbidden. So we take that as the fourth one. The third one is essentially there's nobody gets paid. Yeah. Okay. And what's the fifth one? Oh, I don't know. Cool. This is very involved questionnaire, isn't it? Oh, absolutely one. this is a planet you're running you, you come along and approach it like it's a, like it's a night out at bonkers night spot with, oh, with, your, I, I, with your flippancy i can't think of a fifth one well we're, 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 well, we're, go, we're going to sit oh, here until you do uh what, what are the other things well done away with the uh finance um mm. uh I suppose home secretaries, but I'm now firing people off into space and having them executed on for entertainment for the rest. Well, um, okay. What, what, what's down. your what's your house building program? What do people live in? Oh, they don't. They just sleep in the dirt. They just sleep in the dirt. <laughs> so okay. nice climate on the whole planet. Never gets too cold. Never gets too hot. So you can just you know when they get tired, just lay down. Just Go lie down, sleep. exposed to the elements such as they are. Yeah. So. A little bit like being at Glastonbury Festival. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a lot like it. Do you think that Zog's going to be a popular planet? Uh, well, they won't be able to escape. So impoverished peasants that are in slavery. Only yeah. I will have access to teleportation, spaceships, stuff like that. So they can't go anywhere. Okay. They just multiply, you know. What about the <laughs> risk of you receiving a poisoned cheese and an oh. witch? Mm. Oh, well, I'll have uh, tasters, of course, slave tasters. What if the slave tasters are in, in the insurgency because they think, you know, this... I mean, you talked earlier about it sort of being a bit benign dictatorship. I, I'm struggling a bit to find where the benign aspect is. <laughs> well, I'll pick them randomly so they don't know. Okay. And, and they have to eat the thing. They've got to eat the thing that I'm going to eat. Would this particular empress take somebody to sit alongside you as a partner, as in like an emperor, a husband? No. No. Just no. you on your own? Yeah. What about if you get an itch for a bit of um, <laughs> panky panky? Um, oh, I don't know. Well, again, there's slaves, isn't there? So you He's pick a slave. slave. Yeah. But the problem is they're all really weak, the ones that are allowed near you. <laughs> So, yeah. well, that's all right. That's not that, a problem. That's not a problem. Okay, fair enough. Well, Planet Zog, it's certainly an interesting place. It's a place where everybody has to worship the Empress Zogina. Mm -hmm. The flag is simply a black square, and its motto is simplicity. Although, oh, I think there's too many syllables in that, isn't there? Well, there is, so you're going to have to revise Simple. that. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Simple. Oh, well, simple's simple. two syllables. Sim. Sim. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think simp would probably be more appropriate. Simp. Yes, we could call the citizens simps. There you are, you see. That's Perfect. because they'd be so busy trying to crawl up your butt in order to find some favour and not be sent yeah. out to the desert because they've got a snuffle. So exactly. it's a quite an astonishing planet whereby basically it's going to go around conquering other planets, firing off ray guns and missiles. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, daily newspaper, there's only one, will be heralding all of the brilliant achievements mm. of the Empress Zogina, where, who's worshipped by all of the slaves, weak and impoverished as they may well be, who don't get paid anything and are only able to communicate in a monosyllabic fashion. It sounds like Sunshine Saxon sugars, doesn't it? Well, it might be that imagine that imagine if your if your desires were granted and then you find out that's what you've got a planet of sugars to rule over oh, you'd have oh. to deport them to megalia post haste oh yeah we well, just have them executed fired into space with no space yeah. and it's it's a planet where exercise is forbidden mm -hmm. so at least you wouldn't have personal trainers going Go harder. Give me energy. Get buzz. Oh. Go for the burn. So there's none of that. Uh, the people sleep in the dirt while the empress is in her pyramid, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody's allowed to be ill. So exactly, it's perfect. It's utopia, isn't it? Well, you certainly think so, and I can understand <laughs> yeah. why you would, Fiona. There's no doubting 
why you'd see it that way. But of course, valuable viewers, you've heard the planetary vision that Fiona, aka Avid Gardner, has set out for the planet Zog. At first, she, you had to admire the vision of going for a planet rather than a country. That was certainly ambitious. But is it a planet that you'd like to live on? Or would you be thinking, not a chance. I don't think that's going to work for me. Well, you get, of course, your opportunity, as always, to put it to the vote in the community section shortly. So you can let everybody know what you think about Fiona's vision for Planet Zog. Fiona, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and vision with me today. And uh, we'll find out what everybody else thinks of the Planet Zog. Thank you very much for inviting me on, H2. You're welcome.